we were looking for land. That was the original goal of coming out this way. It was never to do food. The food was always gonna be grown here and then taken back to the city. Just by chance, we ended up meeting the right people who knew somebody who wanted to have food. We weren't even thinking about a restaurant in, in rural Minnesota um, until we were asked potentially if that's something that we were willing or wanting to do. And so uh, we just decided to jump at the chance to be able to be as close as we could to the food that we wanted to grow. Um, and it also involved us being able to have land as well. So it was kind of a win-win situation. The name crew comes from uh, a definition of a group of individuals coming together to be creative and build floats for Mardi Gras. Um, and so for us, the restaurant was exactly that, a group of individuals coming together to be creative around food. We wanted the restaurant to be multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multicultural. The food itself, New Orleans is the original melting pot of the United States. And so we wanted to reflect that not only in the food, but also in the people that work here. Being the first black owned business in St. Joseph, um, that we don't have any investors. It's the two of us and my mom yeah. is the only other one. Um, and she's a, she's a, a silent, lady. yeah, she's not a white lady. <laughs> she's a silent partner. It's just Aaron and I that run the day-to-day -day business of both places. So he obviously runs all of the operations here and then I get to run the little cute bakery in the back. The kind of outward facing portion of all of this, um, you definitely need to have some thick skin. You definitely have to um, be uh, self-reliant. Uh, and just definitely have to break down barriers. There's still days in here right now where I have to, people come in and they don't think that I'm the owner of the yeah. place and I have to go to them and be like, hey, it's me, I'm gonna sign that bill and I'm gonna write you the check yeah. for it kind of thing where they're looking, they come in and they're looking for somebody else to, to do that. Even with you yeah. being a woman, it's still the same too, right? Yeah. We're hoping that, you know, through what we're doing, people can see that there's uh, positive movement in, mm -hmm. in, in communities that uh, may not necessarily typically have a strong history of being a multi-ethnic, multi-racial, or having any um, like justice or equality around it. Our nonprofit arm is called Model Citizen Inc. We're a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, our overall mission is to use the um, these our restaurant group as um, a vehicle to propel the nonprofit forward. Um, and through that, um, our mission is to educate um, and connect communities around farming and soil um, so that we can uh, bridge a divide between rural and urban youth. Yeah. There is a lot of space. And the goal is to use it as a teaching farm, but also um, create the sustainable circle between the the bakery, the restaurant, and the farm, and to grow for the farm and or the restaurant and the bakery. So it's creating a sustainable circle that then the youth that get brought to the farm can either choose to continue an education at the farm or to come to the bakery or the restaurant and, and follow the seed to the plate, basically. Phase one is initially finishing our high tunnel that we have, that frame is up. Um, it'll get wrapped in plastic and the ends will get put on and we will proceed to try to start to do some test planting for things that we'd be able to grow in the soil uh, between now and the beginning of next year. Good, okay. Pull your side. And then from there, it branches out into some for-profit initiatives where the kids can create products based off of the food that they would grow. Um, there might be byproducts from the food that they could create a business around um, and turn around and go teach some entrepreneurial skills and financial um, literacy where they could go and create a business, create a product, the marketing around it, um, all of those things that would do that to allow them to potentially create a, a sustainable business by the time that they would graduate high school they might have something that they could move into. I think the biggest thing that we hope that um, the youth learn from spending time at the farm and watching the cycle of the seed to the to the plate and back is is not only 
to learn something about that, but also to gain the um, confidence to dream bigger, um, to dream further than what they expected when they've been sitting in their classrooms in the cities or in rural Minnesota, and, and to dream about not necessarily what they could do around food, but what they can do that isn't what society has told them that they're supposed to be doing. The mission is to grow future leaders. I mean, that's part of the end mission of the Model Citizens is to grow future leaders. And if we can have them have a piece of this uh, social justice piece, and they can have a farming piece, and they can have an entrepreneurial piece, and they can have a financial literacy piece, and they can go out into the world, I think it's, it's cliche to say, but we're trying to help build the Model Citizen.